you know, we um, put on the play maybe three months later. And uh, actually an interesting story. I was so nervous. Right. Uh, on the first night, and my first few lines were a song. Right. And, uh, what, sorry, what was the what was the musical? Viva Mexico. Oh, Viva. <laughs> right. Okay. I played Zorro, you know. Yeah, 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 Zorro, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Zorro and mask and the, the whole lot. But just before I went on stage, I blanked completely. I couldn't remember any of my lines. Oh no. And I was like, oh God, somebody give me a script. I had to look at it. I was looking at it. So I was looking at it and I was like, oh no, that was like 10 seconds, five seconds, and someone just pushed me out. <laughs> and I said, ah. Oh. And then the song came to me just at the right time. And I got through it fine. It went brilliant. But yeah. it was just that panic that I just forget all my lines because I'd yeah, never be. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah, you'd never been on stage before, right? Yeah. So I was like, oh, and I, I was sure that I was going to forget everything. And, but once I got on stage, it kind of all yeah. came back to me. Thank God. Yeah. Isn't, and, isn't that what they say about stage fright, though? That it's normally just before you get on. And once you're on, you're okay. Then, like, you know, yeah. that, that yeah. is so but much stage, anxiety. It wasn't stage fright, like stage fright where you just cannot perform. Oh, okay, right. This was just panic. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is just panic and nervousness. But uh, it's amazing. The minute I went on stage, it all came back. And I just got into character straight away. And we did about five or six shows. And it all went out brilliant. And then I was kind of hooked mm -hmm. after that. Okay, so the first word is blanked. So the word blank means a space. For example, a blank in a sentence is a gap or a space in a sentence. And if you blank or you go blank, it means that your mind goes empty. And this is what Robert says in the video. But just before I went on stage, I blanked completely. So basically, he forgets all his lines. His mind went blank. Now. Can you think of any scenarios where you go blank or where you have gone blank? The next is when we use the minute I. In the video, Robert says, But uh, it's amazing. The minute I went on stage, it all came back. So what he really means is the moment I went on stage. So you can actually replace moment with minute or second. And they all mean exactly the same thing. The minute you finish this video, you need to do the quiz. Next word is a verb and it's to be hooked. It's an informal way of saying addicted. Robert says in the video. Then I was kind of hooked after that. So basically after Rob did his first play, he became addicted to acting. If you have a noun after hooked, we have to say hooked on something. For example, Ed Sheeran's song is about a girl who got hooked on cocaine or I'm hooked on this new series on TV. Are you hooked on anything? The next grammar point is the difference between you are modest and you are being modest. At some point in the video, I tell Robert. Oh, you're being modest. <laughs> now, saying you are something implies a quality that's deeply ingrained in someone, or rather a quality they've no control over it's part of their character. Whereas saying you are being something, like I said in the video, you're being modest, implies a quality that one could easily change because you're only doing it in that moment. You can't refer to someone as being something if it's something they cannot change. For example, you can't say you are being tall, it's just you are tall, because that's not a quality that someone can change about themselves. Saying about someone you are an idiot would be more insulting than saying you are being an idiot because you're suggesting that they're an idiot all the time. Do you know what I mean? So you have to be careful not to insult someone too much. Another example, you're being silly. They're doing something silly or they've said something silly right now. However, if you say you're silly, you're basically saying you're a silly person and 
that's your character, which is a little more insulting. For example, I'm very careful how I speak to my son. And instead of saying, oh, you are so stubborn, I say, you are being stubborn because I don't want to give him a label of stubborn that he might take to heart and remember for the rest of his life. I want him to know that it's not always like that and he can change. Next is a silent P in such words as psychopath and psychological. If you're like playing a psychopath or a, you know, deep psychological fault. In fact, or... whenever we have a P in front of a consonant, we don't pronounce the P. So repeat these words after me and remember the P is silent. Pneumonia. Psychopath. Receipt. Raspberry and psoriasis. Next phrasal verb is a lovely one to muddle through. If you muddle through something, you manage to finish or progress through something, but without being properly prepared or equipped or skilled. And when you muddle through something, the result is normally not great. It's not as good as it would have been if you were fully prepared. Robert says that when acting, they sometimes have to muddle through when they forget their lines. And, and people do forget lines, but we kind of muddle mm. through them and change them as well, mm. this and, mm. you know, and uh, everyone does it, even professionals. Some more examples. He spent most of college partying, yet he muddled through with a C average. So this means he wasn't really fully prepared or organized during his exams or his time in college, but he managed okay anyway. Not as good as if he had prepared. Another one is we hadn't practiced the song enough, so we just muddled through it, meaning we did the best we could without being prepared. Or Catherine muddled through her English class even though she hadn't prepared. 